I will be talking about timing on a motor, uh, Blinky. Uh, Blinky just means that the ESC is not providing any electronic timing. Uh, but I also, uh, so I will be talking about timing in the ESC and then timing in the motor. Now the timing in the motor, this is mechanical timing. Uh, some motors do have an end bell, for example, this one where uh, one can just loosen some screws and then turn this and change the timing. Uh, some motors are fixed timing. A lot of off-road motors have fixed timing and some ESCs will allow you to add timing to it. There's two types of timing, uh, turbo and boost. I'll talk about those a little later. So uh, first, uh, let's talk about timing on the motor. Now this is mechanical timing because you mechanically change the timing on here. And what ends up happening is you have three phases. You have A, B, C. And if you've ever noticed, these are labeled A, B, C. And uh, with brushless motors, these are alternating current. Uh, so the speed control turns the direct current which is DC into alternating. So it'll go, for example, positive, negative, and then positive, negative, and then positive, negative, positive, negative, and then again. So every time, imagine this is your rotor, so your rotor has magnets, so uh, one pole, other pole, north, south, south, whatever, it doesn't matter for the purposes of this. But let's just say it fires from here and here. So it'll go positive, negative, and then it'll go positive, negative, and that's why it's alternating, because this was negative, now it's positive, uh, then positive, negative, it alternates. That's why it's alternating current. So th this magnet is going to be attracted by whatever the current is. So it'll rotate like this, and then you, you change the, the current, so it'll be rotating, and then you change it, and then it'll keep moving, and then you change it again, and it will keep moving. Now, uh, this is 120, so 120 and 120, that's 360 degrees. So if we look at half of that, this is 60 degrees. So what ends up happening is the following. Let's just say your motor's here, or your rotor, it's halfway in between. If you go beyond 60 degrees, you, you always wanna be over here. And the reason why is when you fire off, you want this to attract and go to the other side. So you always want it to go over. The problem is when you go beyond 60, uh, this, so let's just say you go over here, the timing, this is going to, once you fire, it's gonna start wanting to spin backwards. So that's the problem with it. That's why you never want to exceed 60 degrees of timing because if your timing is off, let's just say, uh, so if you look at this, so notice where this is at, uh, once it fires off, this is going to want to attract this to the next one, and then the next one, all right, the next one, the next one, so on and so forth. But if you're beyond 60, depending on where your phase is, uh, let's just say you're, you really don't want to be at 60 either. Uh, but let's just say you're beyond 60 degrees, you're uh, somewhere over here. This thing's going to want to spin back. Uh, and that's that's the problem. So the more timing, generally, the higher the amp draw, it's going to try to consume. So think about it as more energy. Uh, but when you exceed 60 degrees, now this thing is fighting. There's an amount that wants it to send it forward, and there's a force that's wanting to send it back. So you're just gonna create more heat in the motor because it's going to use up more amperage. Uh, so the more amps, uh, the more heat. That's generally the way it works. Uh, so never exceed 60, and this is why you have to really be careful. Uh, a very good spot, to be honest, if you think about, let's see, somewhere in between, I should have used a different colored pen, but let's just say we split this in half. So this would now be 30 degrees. And if we split this in half, this would be 15, so overall this would be 45. This is actually a very good spot for timing. So most of the motors are going to run very, very well, somewhere between, say, 45 and 50 degrees of timing. 45 is actually a pretty good timing 
and then you can adjust your gearing to get the speed. Uh, but 45 is a sweet spot for many motors, uh, 45, 48. Once you start going over 50, uh, yes, you'll get a little more top speed, but you generally sacrifice a little bit of uh, cooling as well. Now, uh, a lot of people will say, well, the lower the timing, down to 30, don't go below 30, there's no point, your motor's not working, it's not doing anything, it probably doesn't even know it's a motor at that point, or what it's supposed to be doing. But let's just say you go down to 30, some people will say, well, lower timing will give you more torque, so 45 will have more torque than 50. Now, uh, the reason behind that uh, is because of the angle, so it's the arc that you have to go. Uh, you're applying uh, just, just because of the grease, when you fire off, it's pulling that extra amount. Uh, so it has to do with the, I keep saying rotational arc. I'm drawing a blank, somebody will put in the comments at some point. Uh, but it has to do with the rotational angle. That's the reason why. Uh, now, let's talk about Blinky. So blinky, blinky just means the ESC is not providing any timing. So one of the things that you can do with motors is you can set the timing, for example, let's just say you wanna set the timing at 40. Set the timing at 40. Now, most motors at 40 degrees are probably not gonna be doing much work at 40. Uh, it also depends on the amount of turns in motors. Some uh, 13.5 motors, to be honest, their sweet spot tends to be around uh, 37, uh, just below 40 degrees. That's generally where they're about, or around 40 degrees. They're drawing about five to six amps, somewhere around there, such as this hobby wing, uh, or R1 or other motors. Uh, but if you have a motor that's, for example, a 215, 215s, they're generally not drawing five amps until way up in the fifties. So that is something that you want to keep in mind. You want to keep in mind what motor you're running. So for example, let's just say you're running something like this, a 13.5. And let's just say it draws five amps at, I'm making up numbers here, let's say at 35 degrees. So just to make it easy, 35 degrees, so very close to 30. Well, here's the thing. Uh, you know that if you're at 35 degrees, you're going to get a certain number of kV. Now kV, um, that is what influences your RPM. So KV is a constant and you multiply that times the voltage and that gives you the RPM. So for the purposes of this, I'm going to stop saying KV and I'm gonna say RPM uh, just because it's the product, but RPM is easier. So revolutions per minute. Uh, so you know it has a certain amount of RPM, but you know if you go to 45, it'll increase the RPM drastically. But you'll also know that by going from 35 to 45, it'll increase the amp draw from on a motor like this uh, without the information. I have the information somewhere, but let's just say it goes from five amps to nine amps, which is possible. Uh, I mean, it can go to seven, eight amps, but that is very inefficient and it heats up a lot, but you want the extra speed. So what do you do? The problem is if you set this to that 45 degrees and you're drawing say seven, eight amps, the motor is gonna get very, very hot. Even with the cooling fan, depending on the weather and everything, it's gonna get very, very hot. So you can run the risk of burning up your motor. And even if you manage cooling, it's gonna be so inefficient, you're gonna need a massive battery pack. You're gonna need something like an 8200 or a 9600 battery pack uh, for a five minute run, for example, just because it's so inefficient. And if you actually calculate how much it draws compared to this speed, it, it's really not worth it. So more than likely, you're not going to be doing that. You're going to reduce the timing and you're gonna to go to that 35 where that pack will last you the race and then some. So you don't have to worry about uh, thermaling the motor, you will not have to worry about a low voltage cutoff or anything like that damaging your pack. But now you're back in square one. It's not that fast. Well, this is where the other aspects of timing come in. So Blinky, there is no timing on the ESC. And for spec racing, well, you've got to deal with this and you've got to take the risk of overheating the motor or running your pack low or just getting a bigger pack, which adds more weight instead of going with a smaller pack that is less heavy. 
But if you're running a class, for example, a modified class where you can use timing, you would not run in blinky mode. Uh, what you would do is you would set the motor at, say, 35. So you would have it at 35 degrees. And then you can add either boost or you can add turbo. Or both. You can actually add both. Now, these add up together. And the way it works is you can program the ESC to take any of the, to take boost at any RPM. So the thing is that you need to know what the RPM is. So hopefully you have an analyzer, you have an idea uh, of where it goes. But turbo, this will engage at full throttle. So as soon as you hit full throttle, turbo will add whatever RPM you want. So you could potentially be running an entire track. Uh, let's just say it's a small technical track. You want to run cool, so you run at 35, but then you have these straightaways where you really need that speed. Well, uh, let's just say your goal is uh, 45 degrees. You can add 10 degrees of turbo. So every time you go full throttle, this is already at 35, and the ESC will automatically advance timing 10 degrees. Because you can always uh, advance timing through the ESC, and that's what turbo will do. So every time you go full throttle, now you're at 45 degrees combined. Now, let's just say that's still kind of slow and you wanna add timing, not at full throttle, because you're not always at full throttle, but you wanna add timing. Let's just say there's a few turns that are very, very short, and then some are just longer turns. Maybe you have a sweeper, or there's a, a, a large chicane instead of a small chicane, and you figure, all right, most of the time I'm gonna be running at 35, this is gonna be efficient, my motor's gonna be cool, but once in a while, I mean, you can sacrifice this on the straight because it's not gonna be running at this timing for very long, the fan will manage it to cool it down afterwards, but there's still a few turns where I want a little more speed. Well, you can decide if you already know what the RPM is of your motor, uh, you can decide to add, let's just say at 10,000 RPMs, 15,000 RPMs, 20,000 RPMs. It, it's going to depend on your motor. 13.5 uh, is gonna have a higher RPM than a 25.5, for example. A 4.5 is gonna have a lot more RPM than any of those motors. So you have to have an idea of where it is, but let's just say you decide all right, I'll add, mm, just for kicks, uh, let's just pick a conservative number, five degrees of timing at uh, 40,000 RPM. So I'm gonna say 40K, and I'm picking this number at random. So what's gonna happen is the following. If you are going, taking turns, and the motor reaches 40,000 RPM, now this is really high, this is a really high number. This way too high for this. Uh, so maybe I should pick something else. Let's go 20,000. Now that's an ugly 20. Uh, so 20,000 RPM. So let's just say you're taking that turn. It's at 35, 35. As soon as you get to that 20,000 RPM, you're now going to add these two together. So your motor is actually going to be running at 40 degrees of timing, 35 mechanical and five from the ESC advance. And then as soon as you come out of the turn, let's just start going into the straightaway and you punch it full throttle. Now you were at 40 plus 10, now you're at 50 degrees timing. So you have a lot of that speed. Plus if you carried that speed into the corner, you probably don't need that torque to get you off the line because you were already rolling. So this thing's just gonna take off. Now, something else that will also happen is, let's just say you're below 20,000 RPM So your motor's running at 35 and you punch it and you go full throttle, it's gonna do 35 plus the 10 degrees of turbo from the ESC advance. So you're gonna be running at 45 degrees. And then once you reach this RPM, the extra five degrees of timing is going to kick in. So blinky mode eliminates this. It does not allow you to do this. So you're stuck with whatever timing is here. Boost will give you timing at certain RPM. And turbo is gonna give you boost whenever you go full throttle. So it's just going to depend on what RPM you choose. This will always be full throttle, but here 
it's going to depend on uh, what RPM you choose. So it is possible for this and this to add together. And this is where you have to be careful because let's say you decided to do 15 degrees here, all right? So you're safe there, that's 35 and 15, right? If we add these two together, that is 50. But if you go full throttle, now you're at 60. So you're in a bit of a pickle. Or let's say we cover this up, you're at low RPM, you're at 35 mechanical, you hit full throttle, now you're at 45. But as soon as it reaches that RPM, now you're at 60 you're in trouble now because 60, this thing now wants to start going backwards. So it's very easy to screw these up, especially let's just say if you had 40 degrees of mechanical timing or this, and then you went 15, 15, you're quickly going to overheat your motor. Uh, one of the things that could happen is you, you could potentially break the rotor. So the, the magnet and the actual rotor will prematurely break. Uh, there's a variety of things that happen. I mean, you can overheat it, and if you overheat it, you can damage the, the coating on the coils, on the wire. You can damage some of the epoxy as well. And then you would need either a new can or a new rotor. Uh, just depends. Sometimes, so if you look at these coils, sometimes they'll start turning black and they'll start smelling. That's because you're burning it up. Uh, so keep that in mind. But uh, this is the basics. So again, blinky mode just means it's the ESC is not advancing timing. So it's, you're only working on mechanical timing. And you're going to want to run blinky mode whenever there's a spec class, for example, and it's a blinky class. Uh, if you're just messing around, bashing, well, then <laughs> you can do as you please. It, it doesn't really matter. Uh, but boost will always be set in RPM and you're you're going to pick this. And if you look at some of the drag ESCs, like drag car ESCs, one of the advantages that they have is they allow you to pick boost at different RPMs. So you can, uh, for example, the uh, Tegan ESC and the Macklin ESC, I forget the number for it, but the uh, DRK, I believe, you can pick about five different boost range. So you can start with very low timing just to have sort of a smooth start and then just more timing, more time, more time to get more and more RPM to get faster as the vehicle gets going. Uh, but most ESCs, like a regular Hobbywing X10, uh, you're going to have just one boost value. And then, well, turbo, you get one turbo value because this is full throttle. But uh, some ESCs, such as those drag ESCs, they'll have a delay on the turbo. So you can punch it full throttle but the turbo won't engage until say after half a second. I think they go in 0.2 increments of a second. Uh, so you can delay it an entire second if you want for boost. But that's a story for another time. The main thing is Blinky does not allow any of this. And that's generally for spec racing. It's just mechanical timing set on your motor. Boost is set to an RPM. Turbo is set to full throttle. Again, some ESCs will allow a delay for turbo. Timing, you never want to exceed 60 degrees because at that point, the magnets are wanting to go backwards because as the firing order changes, you're now attracting it and it's going to start wanting to rotate backwards. So never, ever, ever exceed 60 degrees of timing. Depending on the motor, the sweet spot will change. Generally, high turn motors such as a 21.5 uh, sweet spot is going to be around probably 52 degrees, to be honest. Uh, once you get into the 13.5s, you're looking into the high 30s. You're probably looking at about 38 degrees of timing. That's your only sweet spot. Maybe low 40s. Uh, it really is going to depend on whatever rotor you have, uh, diameter strength, etc. But that being said, I hope this answers a few questions about what blinky mode is, why you should never exceed 60 degrees, what is boost, and what is turbo. So I hope this information was informative, or at least entertaining. Uh, please subscribe if you have not. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.